What's the word, y'all? We're back with another recap episode. I had people hitting me up asking if the recap was dead because I haven't posted it in a few days. Absolutely not. Sometimes I watch an entire slate of games and I just don't have anything to talk about. You know what I'm saying? For the first month of the season, it feels like I'm watching every single game with like an inquisitive mindset trying to figure out will these pieces work? This new head coach? This rookie? I got to talk about those things. But once we get to this point, we kind of have an idea about every NBA team. Of course, you're going to have slumps. You're going to have teams going hot streaks. But, you know, sometimes it's just nothing to talk about. But today I made it a mission to watch every single game that I could today and talk about it. And we're starting off the show talking about um, the most unlikely win streak in the history of sports. The Houston Rockets are in a seven-game win streak. No team in the major American sports have lost 15 games in a row, then followed that up with a seven-game win streak. And Rockets fans, this is on you. Because people say that the Kenny curse is real, or the for real curse is for real. Seven-game win streak. Next game, y'all go against the Bucks. But if y'all saw my mentions, oh, you would, you would know that the Rockets fans want me to talk about y'all. So if you lose next game, don't come at me. You feel me? Don't come at me. But, hey, I'm just going to say... This win streak did start against the Bulls. We gave that man, Garrison Matthews, all of the confidence. What do they call him? We gave Garrison Matthews all the confidence to turn into Gary Bird. Because <laughs> that's a that's a real thing. That they, he got MVP chance today, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you know what? I understand it. They're going against uh, James Harden, and the man had like 15 points in the fourth quarter. He's diving all over the place for the ball, hitting clutch shots. Sure, call him, call him Gary Bird. It's kind of crazy that that man was just out there and nobody signed him. I had to go look at his previous stats when he was in Washington. The man was like a 40% three-point shooter, and nobody signed him. That's a, that's a diamond in the rough. If they don't give that man like a real contract, because if I'm not mistaken, he's on a two-way, if they don't give that man a real contract soon, they really bugging out. Because since he's been in the lineup, they have been incredible. Now, a lot of that is due to the fact that they decided to bench Daniel Tice and let Christian Wood play his natural position of the center and be the only guard or be the only center. And I was listening to Kevin O'Connor on the mismatch, and they were talking about the Houston Rockets, and they were just talking about how his on-ball screens have increased dramatically since they threw Daniel Tice to the bench. And when you have a guy like Christian Wood, who's one of the best um, pick setters and rollers slash poppers in the league, it just opened things up for the offense and him much more. This is a guy that can hit the three-point, dunk on you. There's like, he's a three-level score at the center position. It just opened things up a lot. I've been seeing a lot of like, I don't like using the word haters very often, but I see a lot of doubters uh, talking about how this streak has started since Jalen Green got injured in, what was it, the first quarter versus the Bulls, and they have not looked back since. I don't think those two things are connected whatsoever. Um, uh, Eric Gordon, it's having a little resurgence, a guy that people question what type of package you can get for him because of his contract. If he continues to play like this, you're talking about a potential lottery protected first round pick for a guy like him. They still got to figure out what they want to do with Christian Wood because you can keep him around. He's only 26 or you can trade him away when he's at the peak of his powers. I don't really know, but it's a good hearted story that a team that was just on a 15 game win streak, one of the teams that I had decided in that 15 game win streak that I will not be watching the boys anymore this season. Turn it around. Jay Sean Tate, great defender. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of pieces. And even to today specifically, talking about this game, who was it, Josh Christopher? I did not watch this game live. But after they won, I knew I wanted to talk about them going on the streak, so I went back to watch. And honestly, if I'm being, if I'm keeping the buck with you, I watched this more to figure out what the hell was going on with James Harden, seeing if how he was going to perform. And I saw that he ended with a terrible like shooting percentage, but the stat line looked decent when you don't look at the fact that he only had three, three shots. And I came to the realization, um, uh, Josh Christopher, Really solid on his birthday. Perfect from the field. And then he guarded Harden very well. They got a lot of young pieces. Y'all know that be even before the draft, I said that Sengun was one of my favorite uh, prospects in it. The man be pass faking to nobody and they be working. He had a crazy move in the first quarter. So it's just a cool story. Do I think they're going to go undefeated for the rest of the season? Time will tell. And now let's talk about Nikola Jokic because today he had a game where he scored 39, 11, and 11. And went into a fourth quarter and scored every single point other than, like, intentionally fouling free throws. I think Will Barton hit some, and I think Aaron Gordon hit some in the overtime. Um, this man, Nikola Jokic. This is, this is why I'm working on the merch line. I don't know if I should be announcing this to the world. I'm working on a merch line that is just revolving around enjoy basketball, just that itself. So if you're a designer, hit a brother up. Hit me up on my Twitter account because I'm looking for people to help me design different merch stuff. But this is why I always say enjoy basketball because right now, I'm not saying that this is the peak of Jokic's powers because last year he won MVP and he got even better. But I want everybody to watch as much Jokic as you can because he is like a one-man wrecking ball. There's nothing that this man can't do. And he went from a guy that was known around around the league or perceived around the league as a bad defender to an average defender to a slightly above average defender to this year he's playing good defense 
what the heck? We knew he can pass. We knew he can score. And now he's bringing all the other pieces to himself. If we're talking about just strictly value to an organization, value to a team, there's maybe one person in the league that's up there with Nikola Jokic. Because when he is not on the court, you watching a G League team. At least that's what it feels like. When he touches the floor, everything opens up so much more. And I think Willie Green in his post-game interview was talking about how we can't double team him because he's the greatest, one of the greatest passers in the league. We can't double team him because he finds every open man all the time. So we'll just let him go one-on-one with Valanchunas for the entire game. It is absolutely insane that um, that he is able to do everything that he can. It was cool to see Bones Highland back on the court. Instagram story, he was dancing because he was out of um, whatever he was into. But Jokic, man. If you're not watching Jokic every single night or as much as you can, you are missing out. I don't want y'all to fall into the trap that I did with, I always mention the Tim Duncan stuff where I didn't watch enough Tim Duncan in his prime because I was just like, oh, he putting up great stats. I'll watch it later. Do not do that with Jokic, bro. Go watch Jokic play. He's incredible. And they won that game, but I do want to show a lot of love to one of the Kenny for real all-stars, the for real all-stars. Herb Jones, another very good game. The last five or so games, um, Herb's offense has come around more and more. And a lot of that is because today they threw a double team at Brandon Ingram a lot. So Herb Jones got a lot of open looks and he knocked them down. 8 for 11 from the field. He ran a transition. He hit his two threes. Played good defense all around. There was the one play when him... Well, no, 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 no. I think it was... Was he a part of that play? There was the one super hustle play from Brandon Ingram, Josh Hart. And I don't remember if Vontae was in it or Herb Jones in it. Either way, just great defense all around for Herb Jones. Good offense. And, you know, the Kenny Freer all-star. He's a champion around here. And he got the poster. Oh, my God. He posted Jokic. <laughs> there it is. But I know this team is desperately counting down the days until Zion can hoop again. I know there's that one picture of Zion that went viral in his red jumpsuit where he looked huge. But the next day, well, I guess today... Um, there's a picture of him at a jewelry shop, and he didn't look that that big. Camera angles matter, bro. Lenses matter, too. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know a ton about cameras, but in the process of setting up my YouTube channels, I found out the lenses are the most important thing. It could change the way I look crazily. There's a whole YouTube video about that. But whatever, regardless, move on to the next game. This is not a game I got to watch live, but somebody had tweeted at me, Kenny, did you watch the end of Thunder versus Ra Raptors? And I didn't. So I was like, you know what? Let me tune in. Um, And I think that the Thunder were down by 10 at one point, and then they were up by 10 with like two minutes to go. And then Freddie hit a couple shots, uh, Pascal got a tip in, and Justin, um, oh my God, how you pronounce this man's name? Champagne. I don't know if I'm pronouncing I listened to the broadcast and I was like, oh, I'm gonna remember that, and I do not remember it. There's a country music star with the exact name. He just don't have an I before the E. Anyway, um, there's a play where I think Freddie found him, and he just had, like, the longest arms I've ever seen because he was cutting, and it was the pass was way behind him. He got it, went up in one motion. And every time I watch the, watch the Raptors, I be thinking, like, where are they getting these dudes? Like the uh, the Banton kid. I had no idea Banton existed to like, I guess, like game three or four of the season. And he just looks solid as a big old guard or big old point forward, and they got this guy to nowhere. He hit um that shot. He hit a free throw and one. And then he had the tip in that didn't count. He almost was the sa the savior of this entire game, but he wasn't. But Lou Dort, another 20-piece. Shea Gilles Alexander took it super personal when they lost by 73 without him. And he was like, you know what? We won't be the laughing stock of the league no more because we're going to go on a win streak as soon as I get back in that lineup. And here they are on a two-game win streak. The Bulls lost to the Cavs, or I guess the, the Cavs beat the Bulls. The wording matters, you feel me? They played an amazing game, man. I've been a Cavs backer all season long because I've been a huge fan of Evan Mobley. And I hope, hopefully, if you did watch this game, you got to see all the greatness that is Evan Mobley. Somebody put it very perfectly because somebody asked on Twitter, how are the Bulls down by so much? And let me read you the exact tweet because I liked it. I liked it because it was about as true as can get. Bulls missing 24 dudes. I'm going to censor a little bit. Evan Mobley generational. That's it. And I'm not discrediting the Cavs. But the Bulls do have a lot of injuries and, and virus stuff going on. But the, it's the second part. Evan Mobley being generational because you saw that. Defensively, offensively, very early in this game. I mean, even if the Bulls were healthy, this is a tough matchup for the Bulls, if I'm being honest. They run three seven-footers. We have one seven-footer in basically the entire roster. You know what I'm saying? We just don't match up well size-wise. But when you include all the injuries and the COVID stuff, we were desperately like looking for something to happen and coach JB Bickerstaff said give it to Evan Mobley and let him kill Ayo DeSumo why is my my little homie Ayo 
guarding <laughs> seven foot Evan Mobley in the post. And he gave him the work. And then we kept trying to go at the rim. We kept going at the rim. And it was like, Mobley block, Mobley block. Mobley strip, Mobley block, <laughs> Mobley block. Um, and then Darius Garland hit his threes for me. I took his over on threes because, again, I didn't expect the Bulls to win this game at all. And I thought that Darius Garland was going to have a big game. And he ended up with 24, 6, and 3 and hit his 3 3. So, a uh, good game good game for the Cavaliers. I want to see y'all again once we healthy, though. I feel like we match up just maybe a little bit better with health. Um, they basically just do everything at Zach Levine. Vucevic can't hit shots. When Vucevic is off, it is super off. You feel me? When he's off, it's super off. And today's one of those super off days where we needed him to be good to have a chance. And they threw everything at Zach Levine. Isaac Okoro was all over him. They just had it all. So shout out to the Cavs. Wizards versus Pistons. Ooh, ooh, ooh. The biggest takeaway for me is the fourth quarter. Oh, not the fourth quarter. The overtime for Kay Cunningham. How they kept getting a switch onto Daniel Gafford. And he was just going at Gaff over and over and over and just getting buckets. That's the silver lining for the Pistons fans who ended up, um, you know, you don't want to ever lose a game. But to see your stars or your up-and-coming star player, your number one pick, see a mismatch like that in overtime and just take over is a great sign. Um, the Wizards were, they needed this win bad because they were slowly falling. And after that win, they are now 15 of um, 11. But in the last 10 or so, they hadn't been as good as they were at the beginning of the season. And then now you got the stuff where Bradley Beal said he don't want to sign an extension because he don't want to lock himself in, which is crazy. Because even when the, when the team was bad last year, two years ago, he was talking about he was loyal. And now that the team might be decent, he like, wait a minute, I don't want to be here. Or maybe I don't want to be here. I don't know yet. Um, so I expect a lot of Bradley Beal um, chatter. A, a lot of Bradley Beal trade chatter. And if I was the Wizards, regardless, regardless of if they stayed a five seed or in that realm, I'd look to trade Bradley Beal because if he's not ready to sign that page right now, that, that contract right now, you got to get him while he's at the peak of his powers. I mean, I feel like... Well, not I feel like this is this is proven by the numbers in the eye test. He's not having an amazing season. Um, but I still think there are teams out there that would be willing to pay big dollar, including one in Philly that would love a Bradley Beal type player. That's all I'm saying. I didn't watch a ton of the Knicks versus the Pacers game. But what I did see was in that first quarter, which I did watch. And after that, I was like, you know what? I'm not going to waste my time here. Um, first of all, it's very hilarious that this team decided to blow it up um, after last game, which they won. And then they blew it up, or they're starting to blow it up, and they win another game against a playoff team. It's weird. But what I saw in that first quarter, and again, the Knicks are on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, so I'm not you know, mad at them for losing this one, even though some people are, which is fine too. Um, Chris Dorte saw Evan Fournier and licked his lips. Free food. It's cook session. It was over. Um, and they, they basically had to tell Evan Fournier, you, don't, you shouldn't be guarding nobody out there. Because, I mean, he basically wasn't. And I decided to record this video... <laughs> Before the end of Clippers versus Celtics, because the Clippers were up by so much. It's a five-point game with a minute to go. I didn't watch enough of that to even talk about it. So forgive me if Jason Tatum or somebody's taken off to bring this comeback. Because they were just down by 20 when I started this film. Are those all the games I watched? Yes, I did see that the Jazz are back to shooting their threes historically well. And that um, Jordan Clarkson is looking like the Jordan Clarkson from last year, at least recently. So that's a good sign. Um, earlier in the season, we talked about how their offense is number one, but they still weren't start. They weren't hitting their shots yet. And now they're starting to hit their shots. And now the offense looks crazy because they just went against a Timberwolves team who had been one of the better defensive teams in the league, mind you, and put up 136 points in regulation. Just letting you know, <laughs> just letting you know when they're hitting their threes, it's a bit scary. That's all though, man. Again, designers hit me up. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm trying to get some shirts with some Enjoy Basketball stuff on because I think that's a mess we, we can all get behind. I think there are so many people that pick and prod players or teams and just basketball in general that it takes away from the fun. It is fun. It is okay to criticize, of course. This channel wouldn't exist without criticism or just talking about basketball in general. But when you take it too far, when you're no longer enjoying the product, that's where you get in trouble. And I just want people to enjoy basketball.